Home Secretary Suella Braverman joins us now. Very good morning to you, Home Secretary. Are you good able morning. to tell us whether you've filled the gap in the numbers of police officers that have been lost over the past few years? We're very confident that we are on track to meet our manifesto commitment to have recruited 20,000 new police officers. And we look forward to the announcement to be made later today. Uh, just to correct you, Susanna, we're not filling a gap. We are going, and if we do achieve this target, we will have a record number of police officers ever in the history of policing uh, in England and Wales. So that's higher than any figure uh, that the Labour, previous Labour administrations mm. will have reached. You came to government and there were around 142 thousand police officers in England and Wales uh, and in 2022 there were around 142,000 police officers in England and Wales. In the meantime under your government the numbers went down to 121,929 in 2017 so when I say you're just filling the gap you are simply just filling the gap. As I said uh, we're, we're very confident that we're not uh, uh, filling any gaps. We're actually uh, bringing 20, in a new police. generation. You lost 20,000 in... police officers, Home Secretary, during we're the course confident. of your government. We're, on, we're confident that we're on track to have uh, a record number, so higher than any previous number uh, recorded when it comes to the number of officers Do you acknowledge uh, working that in, in our police. In 2017, under your government, 20,000 police officers were cut from our police forces. What, what I do acknowledge and what I'm here to celebrate is uh, the hard work put in by police chiefs all around the country. Well, I'm sure the we celebrate that. My question was, do you acknowledge by... that under your government, 20,000 police officers were cut? Again, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've repeated myself twice already, but I'll say yes. it again. I know, because you're not if answering the question. My target... question was, do you acknowledge that 20,000 police officers were cut? Isn't the if answer we, just yes, Home Secretary? If we meet our target, and we're confident that we're going to, we will have surpassed any number that was on the books uh, even prior to 2010. So that rec represents a record number, higher than the Labour years, higher than previous administrations. So looking at what's happened in the last 10 years is somewhat of an irrelevance. We made a pledge. Politics, we Secretary, made a sorry. pledge. To, uh, it's irrelevant. We made a pledge in 2019. We were elected on a manifesto commitment to recruit 20,000 new officers. I'm delighted that we're confident uh, that we're on track so to secure that you goal. So you think it's irrelevant what the police numbers were like in 2017? You don't think that if the police forces were down by 20,000 officers, that might have affected how they tackle crime? Listen, we came into power in 2010, inheriting a financial crisis uh, and uh, a huge, uh, you know, no money was left by the Labour government. We had so to make very it's difficult not irrelevant, choices. It's then, that you had to cut 20,000 police officers, is it? We had to make incredibly difficult choices on a range of public sector spending decisions, and uh, those did affect policing. But what I'm so you do clear acknowledge that twenty thousand police that... officers were cut under your government. What I do acknowledge is that if we reach our target, we will have surpassed any number that's been in our police force ever. And I think that's a huge achievement on the part of policing, a huge achievement on the part of this Conservative government. And considering we have had an increase in the general population over the course of that 13 years, when you say we have a record number, how many more than the 142,000 do you think you're going to be able to announce this morning? Well, we made our pledge in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, that was when we, and that, that pledge we made was taking account of increases in population. If we meet our target, we will have, as I say, a record number of police officers who are working yeah. to it's, combat antisocial behaviour. It's very useful to use a rec the record number as a phrase, isn't it? I'm, what I'm asking is, if there were around 142,000 when you came to government, how many more do you think there will be when you make the announcement this morning? We, a thousand? We, we have, uh, as I said, compared to 2019, we, we will, uh, we no, made I'm a pledge to recruit 20,000. When you came into government 000. in 2010? Because we know you cut 20,000 in that time. 
I'm not going to announce a figure. We've got to wait for the announcement to be made in the proper course. We're confident that we are on track to meet our 20,000 recruitment target. That will mean more visible policing. That will be more responsive policing to antisocial behaviour, to violence, to theft, to burglary. That's what the British people want. That's what we're delivering. Okay, so more police officers is good, but you acknowledge you did cut 20,000 during the course of this government. That can't have been good, can it? I think that's the fourth time you've asked the question, yeah. Susanna. I think the, the issue is we inherited a, uh, an unprecedented uh, financial disaster in 2010 caused by the previous Labour administration. As I said, their own Treasury Minister left a note saying there was no money left. When there's no money left, you've got to make very difficult decisions. Those decisions were the right decisions over 10 years ago. We're now in 2023 in a different situation, yes. in a different context. All we right. made a pledge at the last general election to recruit 20,000 new officers, and I'm very confident that we're on track to meet that. To fill that gap, yes. With respect, Home Secretary, the reason why Susanna asked you the question four times is because four times you refused to answer it. And the truth is that the numbers went down by 20,000 and you're now seeking to get them back up again by 20,000 to slightly more than they were in 2010. And that's, those are the facts. It just seems better that we acknowledge that. Can I ask you about the quality, though, of these police recruits? Because we've had um, a survey today which follows up the inspector's report last year, which shows that there is a postcode lottery in the way in which vetting is happening in forces across the country. The police chief council say 90% of the time um, the vetting is working, but it seems as though in many cases still forces are not applying mm. proper standards to vetting. And we have, uh, as we had confirmed today, a continuation of um, people coming into policing who shouldn't be in policing, in the words of the chief inspector. I just wonder, why won't you act upon this two years on from the murder of Sarah Everard and actually enforce proper standards for vetting and recruitment which apply at all times to all police forces rather than allowing some police forces, in the inspector's word, not to rise to the proper standards? Well, of course, there's been challenges with standards in policing over recent years, and I have acted. I have made it clear that, uh, that I've instructed the College of Policing to update its guidance on vetting. Uh, that's on a statutory footing. That applies to all police forces. I've asked the Does inspectorate it to, all to go... police forces, Home Secretary? I, I, I've asked the inspectorate to go through all police forces and check whether they're complying with new data. But let me just be... Why don't explain. you make them comply? Let me just explain what happens with vetting. So I want to reassure people there is uh, an extensive process that goes on with recruiting new police officers that takes several weeks. Checks are carried out on convictions and cautions. Financial checks are carried out, character checks, personal checks on relatives and associates. Uh, these checks are extensive. Uh, and only once people satisfy the high standards will they be accepted into the police force. Uh, we're not just taking anyone or everyone who applies to be a police officer. Uh, for example, for every 10 applicants, only one will actually be successful. I think that reflects a, an appropriate level of rigour and discernment which is necessary in a recruitment process in the words for of the police the, force. But in the words of the Chief Inspector today, uh, there are people who have been rec recruited in recent years who should not be police officers. Uh, we saw in the case of David Carrick, how appalling that can be, isn't it your obligation to reassure the public that you're going to go back and make sure that everybody who is a police officer should be a police officer? It's not good enough to know that most of the time it's OK. Well, you've got to keep up, Ed. I've already instructed all of the police forces to go back and check their data, to wash their databases against the police national database, to check for exactly the kinds of concerns so that you raise. Officer will be re if those concerns are raised, then they need to take the appropriate action, the disciplinary action. I've announced that I'm reviewing the dismissals process. If there are, and there are some causes, if you listen to Sir Mark Rowley, he's spoken extensively about his frustrations with the dismissals process. It may well need changes to regulations or even the law. Uh, and if that's necessary, then I will take the steps to change the law to empower chief constables to swiftly remove those police officers who are not fit to wear the badge. Two years after the death of Sarah Everard, I mean, surely you should have acted sooner than this. I mean, why are you waiting to find out whether you take, need to take more steps? Surely it's clear from this report today that you already haven't taken enough steps and need to do more. 
Well, uh, again, I, I, I dispute that. I think that since uh, in the last two years, there's been a lot of action that's been taken. There's been several reviews, not only from the inspectorate, about 40 recommendations were made at the end of last year by the inspectorate, which went out and looked at exactly what the problem is. We've had the report from Louise Casey. We've got another uh, review soon to come through on broader standards and culture within the police. It's right that we make these decisions on the basis of proper evidence and the reports that we've got are building that evidence base. But we're already taking action. We're reviewing the dismissals process. We're updating the guidance and we're ensuring that all police forces are complying with their requirements and checking their databases so that they don't have inappropriate people in their It's still voluntary guidance though, isn't it? That's it's not. It, it's on a statutory footing, which means it's applicable to all forces. Uh, just, uh, just briefly before we let you go, Cleveland failed 15% of their new recruits. Leicestershire, none. Are you confident the same standard is being applied between those two areas? Well, as I said, it's, it's the job of chief constables to carry out their recruitment and vetting processes. They're subject to guidance and uh, standards which are set nationally. Uh, but as I said, uh, for every 10 applicants to policing, on average, only one person will get through, uh, get through the, bird, uh, the, the hurdles and the hoops that we set them, get through the checks, the rigorous checks on security and criminal records and uh, financial checks. You would those are similar rigorous checks. Rates, but are those you are rigorous are checks. Are you confident those are being carried out rigorously, for instance, in Leicestershire? Well, we've asked the inspectorate to review rapidly uh, how forces are doing. They're due to report back very soon on their assessment. They, they carried morning. out that review. He told us this morning that he's not confident. They, they, I instructed them to carry out that yeah. review well, earlier this year. They're doing that. They're going to report back and yeah. then we'll be able to see how well forces are doing. He told us this morning he's not confident. No, I, I've asked the chief inspector to carry out a review of sure. all forces to see yeah. what their, uh, their data is like, what their standards sure. of vetting are like. They're going to report back. I don't want to sure. preempt the proper reporting process to all which right. we're subject. Home Secretary, we really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much indeed.